Welcome to Sound Nerds Pecha Kucha series. Japanese for chit chat, a Pecha Kucha is 20 slides for 20 seconds each. This Pecha Kucha will review how to perform a thyroid ultrasound examination. After the presentation, stick around for a 10 question quiz to check your neck knowledge. The thyroid is a small butterfly shaped gland that sits in the anterior neck. It is the only organ that can metabolize iodine in the body. It uses iodine to make triiodothyronine or T3 and thyroxine T4 two hormones that help to regulate activity in all cells of the body. The lobes of the thyroid are connected by a bridge of tissue called the isthmus. Normal measurement of the lobes in the adult average between 4 and 5 centimeters. The isthmus typically measures less than 5 millimeters. Next to the thyroid at each pole are the parathyroids. The parathyroids secrete parathyroid hormone, which helps to control calcium and phosphorus blood levels. The parathyroid glands are not typically appreciated by ultrasound when they are of normal size, which is about 3 millimeters. Adenomas in the parathyroids can cause them to enlarge and appear as exophytic masses to the thyroid. Many other structures can be seen in the anterior and lateral neck, including muscles such as the strap muscles, the sternocleidomastoid, and the longus coli. The trachea and the esophagus sit more midline. Lateral are the carotid artery and jugular vein. Salivary glands and cervical lymph nodes can also be seen at this level. Evaluation of enlarged glands and lymph nodes are often included in the thyroid soft tissue neck examination. Ultrasound of the thyroid are often ordered due to an enlarged thyroid or goiter, palpable nodules by a clinician, abnormal blood work, or follow-up to known nodules. Adenomas and colloid cysts are the most common benign findings in the thyroid, where papillary cancer is the most common malignant finding. A fine needle aspiration is usually required to determine pathology of nodules seen by ultrasound. However, TIRADS can help by calculating the malignancy risk of ultrasound findings. Soft tissue neck ultrasounds are also ordered to evaluate for palpable masses that often correlate with enlarged submandibular glands or lymph nodes. Normal cervical lymph nodes measure less than one centimeter in AP or transverse measurements. Recent illnesses can cause the lymph nodes to become reactive and enlarge, but they still keep their normal appearance and blood flow. Glands that are large will appear edematous and may have some extra vascularity. To perform a thyroid or soft tissue ultrasound, a high frequency linear transducer should be used. You will also want a curvilinear probe nearby in case of large necks, thyroids, or masses that require a larger field of view for accurate measuring and visualization. The patient should be supine with their neck hyperextended. Some patients will appreciate a rolled up towel under the neck for comfort and support. The standard thyroid protocol is performed bilaterally. In transverse, the superior, mid, and inferior portions of the thyroid should be imaged. In longitudinal, the lateral, mid, and medial parts of the thyroid will be imaged. Lastly, the isthmus is imaged followed by a bilateral image of the entire thyroid. Color Doppler is used unilaterally and bilaterally to compare vascularity. When you are in transverse on the thyroid, the shape will change as you move from superior to inferior. Sweep through in transverse, watching how the thyroid outline changes. These guidelines are of a typical thyroid, but might not match up exactly with what you see on every patient. Remember, as a sonographer, it is your job to know where superior, mid, and inferior are on the organ, not memorizing a shape. After you sweep the organ, let's start to take images. To start, sweep superior out of the thyroid, coming back inferior, and stop where you can see a good representation of the thyroid tissue. The isthmus is typically not seen at this level. Moving to mid, you'll see the isthmus connect. Where is bulkiest is the mid portion. Take an image and measure. Continue scanning inferior all the way out of the thyroid. Come back superior and stop when you have a good representation of thyroid tissue again. The isthmus is sometimes visible at this level. When you turn your transducer for the longitudinal images, you will be slightly oblique with a notch to the 11 11 30 position to get the longest aspect of the thyroid. Again, sweep from the carotid to the trachea, watching how the thyroid elongates at mid but shortens at the lateral and medial portions. Note how the edges of the thyroid change as you sweep through. It may be easiest to find the midline of the thyroid and bring the beam towards the lateral portion. This motion causes the thyroid to shorten and narrow. For mid, elongate the thyroid to where it is flat on the superior border and pointy at the inferior. You will measure and use color at this level. Continue moving the beam medially. You will see the superior and inferior edges give way, making the thyroid look like an upside down pyramid. Measurements of the thyroid are taken at the mid level in both long and transverse. Measure from the most lateral portion to the edge along the trachea, just below where the isthmus attaches. Make sure to find the longest points on your long image. Your AP measurement should be 90 degrees to your long at the tallest point of the thyroid. When you are imaging the thyroid, you are looking for parenchymal changes. Take all of your images with a high frequency transducer for optimal viewing of the parenchyma. However, accurate measurements may mean using a wide or trapezoid scanning to fit the entire thyroid into the field of view for a measurement picture. Make sure you only use this for the measurement picture. Be sure to turn the feature off when it is not necessary as it degrades your resolution. If you still cannot fit all of your thyroid in the image, this is where you will want to use the curved linear transducer. Only use the curved linear for a measurement image. It is not high enough frequency to produce diagnostic parenchyma images. The thyroid will be very tiny in the near field. 
adjust your depth, and take a measurement. When using color, make sure to open your color box completely to cover all the thyroid tissue. You should be able to see flow within the thyroid. Hypervascularity is an indication of Graves' disease. Do not adjust color gain or PRF to mimic or hide this finding. At the end of the protocol, you will show color both sides for comparison. To complete the right side of the neck, slide the transducer so that the internal jugular vein and carotid artery are now in the right portion of the screen. Your transducer is in trans and on the lateral neck. Starting superior, take images down the neck. In about five to six pictures, you'll have representative images of the lateral neck showing any visible lymph nodes. If you see any abnormal lymph nodes, you'll want to document their position and measurements with color flow. This means labeling where on the neck the lymph node is seen along and trans image and measurements. You will draw this and any other pathology you see on your tech sheet. Tech sheets will serve as a roadmap for follow-up imaging. The transverse images on the left side mirror those of the right, where the longitudinal images look exactly the same, except you're moving the transducer in the opposite direction. Remember to measure, use color, and get the lateral neck images as well as look for lymph nodes. After the left side, you will then take a picture of the isthmus. Center on the neck and transverse and find the widest portion. Zoom in and take an AP measurement. Stay in this position and increase your depth. Show both lobes of the thyroid with the isthmus between. Take a bilateral image of the thyroid for lobe comparison. The last picture you need is a color image to compare the blood flow of the lobes. Although this presentation covers a basic normal thyroid protocol, if you come across any pathology, make sure to note the side, location, color profile, and measurements. You can do this by the side or all at the end. And there you go, you've completed a thyroid ultrasound. Remember to be aware of your location, watch how the borders of the thyroid change, and use the tools available to create a thorough and diagnostic image set. It's quiz time! Let's see what you remember about the thyroid protocol. After the question is presented, you'll have a brief moment before the answer is revealed. What are the two main hormones the thyroid produces? Triodothyronine, or T3, and thyroxine. Too much of these hormones in the body results in hyperthyroidism, or too little of these hormones in the body results in hypothyroidism. What is the average length of an adult thyroid and height of the isthmus? The lobes on average measure between 4 and 5 centimeters, but they can be normal up to 7 centimeters, and the height of the isthmus should be less than 5 millimeters. When the isthmus height exceeds 1 centimeter or 10 millimeters, the entire thyroid is considered enlarged. What are the most common benign and malignant findings? Adenomas and cholecysts make up the benign common findings, where papillary cancer is the most common malignancy. What is the best probe to use for the thyroid examination? You want to use a high frequency linear probe, usually around the 12 to 17 megahertz. What structure is also seen at the mid-thyroid in transverse? The isthmus. This one really gives us our landmark for finding where the bulkiest mid portion in transverse is. However, we do know that we can see lots of other structures in the neck, such as muscles, vessels, and the esophagus. The long thyroid at mid usually has a blank superior pole and a blank inferior pole. When you have the thyroid elongated to its maximum, the superior pole usually appears flat and the inferior pole has more of a point to it. What can you do to get an accurate measurement if all of the thyroid doesn't fit in the field of view? You should try to use your wide scan or curved linear probe. The wide scan is a feature on many modern ultrasound machines which creates a trapezoid field of view. If it still isn't enough room, you can use the curved linear probe, but this should only be used for measurements as it does not provide enough information for proparenchymal evaluation. Some people even like to use dual screen and split half the thyroid on each. However, some machines do not allow you to measure across a dual screen. True or false, you should use the wide scan or curved linear for all of your long thyroid pictures. False, the wide scan reduces your lateral resolution, therefore degrading your overall image, and the curved linear just doesn't have a high enough frequency to really evaluate the thyroid parenchyma. What is the normal limit for the transverse or AP measurement of a lymph node? one centimeter. When lymph nodes become reactive, they start to become enlarged, but they keep their kind of ovoid shape and normal blood flow. When lymph nodes become abnormal, they become large and round and anechoic, losing that fatty hilum. Why do we take a bilateral image of the thyroid? 
to compare parenchyma and vascularity. Thank you so much for watching this Pecha Kucha on Small Parts Ultrasound with Thyroid Protocol. Make sure to come back for more quick and educational videos just like this one.